Hey everybody, I am here today, um, the day before I leave to go to British Columbia to go stone sheep hunting, hunting with Art Thompson up at Gundahoo River Outfitters. And I thought it'd be helpful to take you guys through what I'm bringing on my trip. What's my pack? What's my layering system? How I pack my food? What's in my food mix? Uh, as far as what I put together for lunches, dinners, and my food menu. Talk a little bit about calorie count. And then to field questions that may come in uh, that you may have, type them in. And at the end of this, uh, McCade, who's here in the room with me, is going to read off some of those questions that you guys may have specific to some of the gear that I'm bringing and why. Um, I'd like to start today with what's in my pack. And then behind me, we're going to go through my layering system that you see hung up behind, talk a little about the footwear and other things that I'm bringing on this trip. Uh, on, on this BC hunt, uh, being in August, trying to go as light as possible. Um, the warmer weather that we typically get early in August versus later in August, it allows me to bring a little bit less kit uh, because of the warmer weather and lets me go into a 6,000 cubic inch pack on this, on this trip. I'm using the Ultra 6,000 really to really manage weight and it's about as much pack as I need, especially knowing that our pack has the ability to pull away from them. From the bag in the frame where I can, I can pack meat if we need to. Um, majority of what's in the pack you'll see is really um, tent sleeping bags and, and the food. With my gear set up, before I add food, before I add optics to my pack or a rifle that would strap onto it, my pre-food weight um, and pre-weight with all the other options or the other added product to it is right coming in right in uh, the 12 pound range, slightly under, so it's 11 and about uh, 11.8 ounces, or 11 pounds, 8.8 .8 pounds, as far as my preloaded pack weight, which is incredibly low from where I started um, before we started developing the products at Kuyu. We'll be able to take that significantly down. And I'll take you through, through the pack and show you what's in it and what I'm bringing. The top pocket uh, is a great storage for a lot of these accessory dry bags and where I put a lot of my equipment and gear. And on this trip, I need electronics and I need electronic charging uh, capabilities. It's going to be running GPS. I use a Garmin watch for me tracking heart rate um, and also distance travel on this trip to put into the, uh, the laboratory, UC Davis Human Performance Laboratory testing we did. So we can dump that into to what we learned in the, in the lab and, and give you guys the data and breakdown of how far we traveled, how many calories we burned, etc. So it should be pretty good stuff. But because of that, I've got to bring um, some electronic backup power. So I've got the Goal Zero solar panel, a Goal Zero battery pack, which is what the panel will, will load up every single day. And if we're set up at camp and we're going to go from our tent, I'll leave that on top of my tent. I can also strap it to the top of my lid uh, so that I can charge when I'm hiking if needed. So they, these two items will either stay at camp or be strapped to the back of the pack. And then I also bring a small charger that I will load up every day that will go go with me on day hunts if we're away from camp that can recharge my headlamps, recharge my watch and GPS, or sat phone if I need to. So it's a really good setup and system. It's the best I found. And the panel that we carry and the panel I'm using is, is delivers a lot of solar charge. Uh, some of the smaller panels I found just really don't uh, charge batteries all that well. I bring it back up, platypus three liter bladder, I buy a cap to go with it. This is great to have when you're uh, either at camp, you need to let up extra water, or, or you have a leak in a hydration bladder. I've had that happen before, you got a backup. So these smaller bags are filled with survival equipment, lighters, uh, fire starter, it has medical first aid. I carry penicillin, I carry a Z-Pack should I get sick. On the trip, I've got some really strong antibiotics to help me. Um, I carry first aid kits, some of the other specific stuff that I carry in here to share with you. Super glue, this works for cuts. If you get a severe cut, you can pull that skin of the cut together and glue it shut and then wrap it. That works really well if you can't get stitches, which we can't. Uh, a roll of electrical tape, which I use to wrap my barrel to keep debris from getting in my barrel in the hunts a backup emergency headlamp, backup batteries, etc. I always bring a spare hip belt buckle. I haven't ha broken one here at Kuyu, but I have broken them in the past and is something you should have in your kit. 
some of the other items I'll bring. Um, medical tape, should I need it? Should I get a big cut? And just some personal items, sunblock, uh, DEET, those types of things, and then some anti-inflammatories. And I bring um, some pain medication, should I have a severe injury. Um, it's a good thing to have in your emergency kit. A pack rain cover. So that's all gonna go in the upper portion of my lid, in my pack. Main compartment. The bulk of the weight is, I'm going to share with you what I put in this top, top pouch here. So this will be, you know, daily food can go in here, like a lunch, um, or the top of my lid, depending where I want to put it. And then uh, two headlamps, always bring two, two full-blown headlamps, the, the now, and the smaller pencil that we carry as well. Should your main headlamp go out, your emergency headlamp is, is really too small if you're coming out of a really technical train in the middle of the night. And I like the now because of how many lumens it has and how far it can shine a light. It saved me in a couple instances at nighttime. You're traveling down through country so you don't get cliffed out. Open this up here. So inside the main compartment, really it's primarily, you know, a lot of it's filled up with food and some extra clothes. Um, I've got a, I'm taking a, a Mountain Star 2P on this tent. Um, sometimes I'll take the 1P. For the big sheep hunts, I like having a two-pea tent. The double vestibules put gear on one side, cook in another. Gives me more room at night to spread my stuff out if I want to. Or if you get bad weather, you're stuck in your tent for several days, it's nice having the extra room. We've got three different food bags. These are prototype bags that we've created that I'm testing for specifically carrying food. There are still nylon with water resistance uh, zippers and tape seams. So what I have here, I have my dinners, which are all Mountain House dehydrated dinners. And then in the other bag is my breakfast. And I always do a Mountain House dehydrated breakfast, coffee. I like the Starbucks Via because I like good coffee and they come in individual packets. And then I also bring uh, noon tablets um, or I'll bring uh, our Wilderness Athlete products. Um, that's to, to put electrolytes back into my system. And I'll drink one of those every night before I go to bed. And it helps with cramping, also helps just with overall recovery. This larger bag are my daily lunches. And I'll break this thing down to calories per ounce. These bags are 23 ounces. And the dinners, um, the total amount comes to, between the dinners and the breakfast comes to two pounds per day. And my goal is to have a calories per ounce range of 120 to 130 calories per ounce based on the food. Um, within this bag, I have some Pro Bars, I have some Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, the giant size ones because they're high calories per ounce, some almonds, some nuts, some cheese, I have a bagel, I have peanut butter. So a mix of food, I like uh, a lot of fatty foods versus the bars which are high in carbohydrates, high in sugars. It sustains me over a longer period of time in the mountains. And too much sugar, too many carbohydrates in my stomach over a 14 day hunt like we're doing. Um, really starts to make my stomach upset. And I found that just cheeses and, and fatty foods and peanut butters and nuts um, are better for me to perform over a longer period of time. Shorter hunts, not as important. So within the food uh, for a 14 day hunt, two pounds a day is, is a bulk of the weight that's gonna be in my pack. And for sleeping, I've got my Neo Air Long, or x Light, and then our 30 degree bag. And on this trip, people, a lot of people ask, you know, is a 30 degree enough for a northern sheep hunt? In the summer, I believe it is, even into the fall. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll sleep in my layering system, my Super Down products that's with me, the need I'll put on my mid layers as well. Um, and that really gives you a deep, uh, a larger temperature range within your sleeping bag. And you don't have to carry a heavier and bulkier bag like a 15 or or a warmer bag than, than a 30 degree. Pull these off and make room for my layering system that I'm bringing. So before getting into that, uh, some of the products I have sitting here on the table, headwear, I'm gonna wear ball, our ball cap, I like our icon cap, a 240 beanie, our bino harness, and we've got a new product I'm gonna be testing, which is an accessory that attaches to the bottom of our upcoming bino harnesses and lets me carry my bullets 
at the bottom here, and then I'll also carry some extra bullets in my pack. It's just a nice convenient way to access your bullets. We're going to two new, two new gloves uh, called the attack gloves. These are the attack fabric on the outside, Batars leather. It's a real form-fitting glove. There's not a lot of warmth and insulation, which I found to be plenty on a summer sheep hunt. And this is a glove um, because there's not a liner to the leather. It's right against my finger. It's uh, a lot of dexterity and I'll put these gloves on and I never take them off on a sheep hunt unless I'm sitting down to eat or I'm climbing my bag for the night. And it really protects your hands from slips and falls. And then um, it's something that is a must on a sheep hunt is having your hands protected. I bring a merino uh, beanie and a merino neck gaiter. And then I'll be using our, our belt as well. So on the layering system, Base layers on this trip, because of the uh, warmer temperatures we could, we could run into, I'm going to be uh, running our Peloton uh, base layer T and then our arm warmers. And I'll bring two base layer T's, one set of arm warmers. This gives me the flexibility in hot weather to pop these off. Arm warmers are great. I think they're underutilized and under-talked about. But you got a long sleeve shirt, I'll pull these off and put one in each cargo pocket by pants. And then I got the versatility in the hot days, middle of the day, I can pop these off and have uh, uh, I let my arms uh, cool when I'm climbing or it's just the hot weather. For the bottoms, I'm going to run our Peloton boxers and our Peloton uh, 130 zip off bottoms. And a lot of people ask me why not marina wool on this trip. Uh, for me, I like a faster drying base layer. The marina wool is great um, because of the anti odor properties are max spec anti-odor treatment to our synthetics is incredibly effective and I like a faster drying base layer next to my skin versus merino wool. That's all kind of personal preference. Both are great, great choices for sheep hunt. So that covers the t-shirts. Um, mid layers. So I'm gonna be, I always bring the Peloton 200 with me. I also bring the new 97 as well. It gives me a wider range. Both of them are in the hooded uh, hoodie version. And I like the hood. You can pull it up and you know protect your ears. Gives you a little bit more concealment. Helps with the sun if you're in it. Um, and also just gives you a lot of versatility if you're sitting and glassing. So I'll bring the, like I said, the 97 and our 200 along with those Nexus skin base layers. And then a new product for us is the 240 vest and we use that to block wind it's going to operate you know function like a soft shell jacket but really just the focus of keeping my core warm and it's something that's really light and packs up really well and really blocks the wind around my core if i'm sitting in glassing or i need to climb in something that's not heavy still breeze but gives me a little bit more warmth and it's not as hot as like the 200 if i have to hike in it The pants in this trip, I'm running the Alpine pant, which is exactly what I designed it for, sheep hunts. And the reason I like this pant is the fabric weight is a little bit lighter and, and wears cooler than the attack pant. The pant itself is a little bit lighter. Um, I like the doubled cargo pockets that we set up in these pants because I, it gives me more storage and organization within, within the uh, cargo pockets. And the knee pads are great for making stocks, even just in and around camp, you're on your knees a lot, setting up tents, cooking. It's nice to give yourself, uh, your knees a little bit of protection. And this is the pan I'm gonna be bringing on that trip, on this trip. Let's see, Super Down Ultra, never going to the mountains without my down. And I'm gonna bring the Super Down Ultra hooded jacket. And then, but it's not on the market yet, but coming soon is the Ultra Pant as well. And the weight savings on this versus Super Downs is pretty significant in my, in my opinion. Um, and these things compress down to nothing. They are always in my pack and lifesavers in the mountains. If you have to spend the night out, you can go into some pretty cold conditions, as you know, with our Super Down products. Rain, rain gear on this trip, I'm gonna be running our Chugach jacket and pants. Primarily because it's a summer hunt, we're gonna have, uh, hopefully, uh, 
more dry weather than wet weather, and I'll be able to be in and out of my rain gear more than uh, on some other hunts like in Alaska or later in the season where you're going to be a lot more rain. I may look at bringing the Yukon, at least the Yukon pant, if I'm going to spend a lot of time in it. But on this particular trip, I'm really trying to shave weight and count ounces because it's such a long trip and we've got to carry so much food. Um, so I'm doing the Chugach jacket and pant for this trip. For footwear um, and gaiters, I'm running our Yukon gaiters. Uh, I always wear gaiters and sheep hunts. Not only protects your pants and lower section of your legs, but allows us to really move through rivers really quickly. And if, unless the river is really deep, or you're gonna be in the, crossing the river for a very long time, if the water um, doesn't come over the top of the gaiters, a lot of times we can just travel through the rivers really quickly, and the water doesn't come back down inside your boots. Having stretched in this fabric and material, how tight they fit to our boots and how I designed them, uh, that's the primary reason why we can do that with these gaiters versus gaiters that don't stretch. Other gaiters on the market is, is the fact that these do stretch and fit really tight and snug to the boot. Huge advantage. Footwear on this trip, we we'll are running our new Rebel Ultras, designed them for sheep hunting. It's got the really deep lug sole from the Grand Drew and the Grand Drew midsole. This boot's got a great rocker, has still a bit of flex, but I really like a, sti a stiff boot in steep mountains. It just gives you additional traction. You're able to drive that edge into a, on, a, on a steep climb or descent and really gives you traction. If you don't have that stiffness, the boot wants to turn, you're gonna slide. And I, l I really like having a really aggressive sole for sheep hunts. Um, some of that terrain is just nasty. Some of it's very dangerous. And having the reliability you get and traction you get from a, a deep lug sole, I think is a huge advantage. And then with the gator added to the top of this boot, I'll have my socks pushed down inside. We're doing river crossings, or if I know I'm in and out of rivers uh, on a regular basis, then the gators and over the top of this, you're gonna have a, a boot that's gonna be able to stay dry even if the water comes over the top of it. And um, this boot is designed for, for sheep hunting and really built for, for the guides in sheep country because of how durable it is, the mid and out sole, the super fabric, and the skater system. So I'm looking forward to taking these into sheep country and use them for what it's designed for. And I'll be running our, our merino socks as well. I bring three pairs. Um, sometimes I'll bring two. This type of trip, we're gonna be in and out of rivers quite a bit. So a good chance um, socks will be fairly wet and two pairs of socks just isn't enough if you're gonna be in wet conditions to always have a, a dry pair to put on, which is important to save your feet. Ah, one of my favorite products are ice axe, which extends down to become a walking stick. I get a lot of people that go, why not? Why an ice axe for me? And why not trekking poles? And I like it to have a free hand versus having two trekking poles in my hands at all times. Um, if I slip and fall, but let's put a hand down or access things with my pack binoculars without having to set a trekking pole down. I also like that angle of, of my hand and arm position on an ice axe versus a trekking pole where you're, you're holding the trekking pole you know, in this angle. And if you need to really catch yourself, you're not nearly as strong as if having your hand on top of this ice axe and jamming this in and catching yourself with the palm of your hand down. I found it just be a more natural position and it's, it's what I prefer. The other part of a, a ice axe for me too is the top of it, which is a really handy mountain tool, even if you're not in ice. Um, you can dig out, I've dug out tent platforms, we've knocked down alders, we've dug, I've dug runways for bush planes to come pick us up. And I've also buried this end in the side of a mountain to hang my pack on uh, to make a shot on a ram I did in, uh, in Arctic Red River in Northwest Ter Territories. And we we're on the side of a mountain and there's no place to, to put a pack without it tumbling down the mountain. It's able to actually hang it on the ice axe. So a lot of multi-purpose uses. And then another thing I say about the ice axe, it just looks cool in pictures too. Um, this is by Stubai. It's the best ice axe that I found that is telescoping on the market. It's really durable. And then we went to Dubai and got a custom color done on it and got a matte finish on the blades versus a shiny blade. Um, so it works better for hunting. So if you haven't tried one and you're doing a sheep hunt, I'd recommend it. I really, really like it. It seems like whenever I hunt with a guide that hasn't used an ice axe, they always ask if they can have my ice axe at the end of the hunt because they see how useful it is. And then the rifle I'm gonna be taking on this trip is a new custom Remington project that I just got done doing. 
and it's got a titanium action. I don't know if you guys have followed this or not, but the gun, I went and met with Remington's custom shop, and we started from scratch. And I work with their team to develop a gun really specific for sheep hunting, the type of hunting I do. You know, I don't need a 1,000-yard gun or a 1,200-yard gun. I need a 600-yard gun that is light, compact, and, um, and really focused on the needs of what I need up during a, on a sheep hunt. A gun that it's going to be, I'm going to be carrying, you know, up to 10 to 12 miles a day on the side of my pack that's reliable, durable, and meets our needs as a 600-yard 600, 600 gun. It's got a shorter barrel than normal at 20 inches. Uh, Leupold, worked with Leupold, put the optics on it, and we use their VX3 scope because it's 13 ounces to really shave the weight. And it goes up to 14 power, four and a half by 14, which is enough for me on sheep hunts, shooting out to 600 yards. So I'm looking forward to taking this, this rifle into the field, and I'm using a bipod. I found a huge advantage shooting off a bipod. If you haven't, you should think about it. It makes it set up really quick and easy and lets you get a really good solid, solid brace and a steady gun when you're making the, the, the shot, especially after on a sheep hunt when you may get one shot and it's got to count. So total pack weight for me and what I've put together on my gear list, you know, prior to, to the weapon, I'm also to bring a spotting scope and tripod. Um, we're right just over 40, 40 pounds or about 42 and a half pounds, in my loaded pack with all my food, sleeping system. And then when I add optics and rifle, we're, we're sub 50. It's a little bit heavier than normal because it's a 14-day hunt versus a 10-day hunt. So we've got another, um, another eight pounds of food on top of that. Normally, I'll be sub 40 before weapon and optics, and I can be in that 45-pound range. And that's incredibly light. In the past, on a 14-day hunt, before I built all this equipment and gear focus on weight reduction at Kuyu, you know, we were pushing 60 to 65 pounds on a 14-day hunt. And as we've learned in our lab testing, you know, additional 10 pounds or additional 20 pounds is significant, especially when you go from 40 to 60 and you go on incline. Um, we're able to actually see in, in lab study how significant that weight difference is and how it impacts human performance. And we always know that the weight on high and long endurance athletic events is really, really important. And um, it's why we, why I created Kuyu was to work on, you know, cutting weight and really minimizing what you had to carry in your pack with multi-purpose products and focusing on materials and designs that, that do just that, which delivers incredible performance at, less, at, at lighter weights. And um, I always look forward to going on these trips. You know, for me, in designing product and running this company, you know, boots in sheep country, especially northern sheep country, when we really face this wide range of challenging conditions from bad weather to really steep and technical terrain, um, day in and day out. It lets me really get an idea of our product line what works, what doesn't work, what we need to develop and what we're missing, what other problems we need to solve within our product lines. And as I study materials um, and look at different um, fabrics, different uh, manufacturing techniques, it allows me to be, have a really good knowledge base on uh, different items to put into our products or change within our products or add to our product line. And I always look forward to it. It's gonna be a, a good hunt. It looks like the weather forecast is, is good, at least for the first half of our hunt. And I fly up to Vancouver tonight and then into base camp on Sunday and into the mountains Sunday night. And we'll start hiking on Monday. The season opens on Tuesday on the 1st. And um, really looking forward to going. So I hope what I share with you today is helpful for you guys. I know um, it's hard putting a gear list together. We can help you with that. If you, if you call or email customer service, we have specific gear lists. If you want to work with somebody on our team to put one together for a specific hunt, we have specialists. Put you in touch with Brendan Burns, who's a, a lifelong sheep hunter, sheep guide. He works for us, runs our guide and outfitter program. He'll work with you. Um, customer service team can work with you and build the perfect kit for your hunts to make sure you have everything you need. And maybe even more importantly, working off a gear list is not bringing more than what you need and really you know, minimizing that pack weight, which is important. So um, that's it for today. Um, let's move on to some questions, McCade. Awesome. So we had a couple come in. Uh, first one's from Wasteland 19. Wasteland 19, all right. Yep. When are we going to see a warm weather leather palm glove? I really miss the tid drawings. So what I showed you with the attack glove, if I can find it here, it's probably buried in the, in the pile of stuff down here. It's uh, one of the challenges with the Tiburon glove, and I loved it, is just the durability of the outer fabric and the fact that the heavier duty Tiburon fabric is only a two-way stretch. It just didn't perform as we hoped in the glove um, between durability and the stretch and how form-fitting we can get it. The, the new attack glove, I think, is a better solution for a hot weather glove is the one I'm taking because it's unlined. 
Uh, it's just the leather and then our stretch woven attack pant fabric, which is incredibly breathable and very light. And it's a form fitting glove. There isn't a wrist closure, so you can pull it on and off without Velcro. And it's my go to summer glove. And if, you, if you're looking for a warm weather glove, I would really, really recommend that one. Awesome. What else do you have? Uh, next question from Mike D. What glass are you using? So I'm bringing 10 by 50s, or excuse me, 10 by 40s Swaros with the laser rangefinder on it. And then for, for optics, I'm bringing a Swaro 65 millimeter scope and a um, Manfrotto head and Manfrotto tripod, all carbon on the tripod. Awesome. This one came in from Facebook. Uh, Chad Mahalik asked, what's one piece of Kuyu gear you can't go on a trip without? <laughs> you know, I'd like to say there's one. Uh, I mean, if I'm, not, if I'm not bringing my optics, so maybe the buying a harness, there's no reason for me to go into the field. But really for us and, and the product line that we put together, I need all of it um, because anything other than the Kuyu products I've made and, and what we produce as far as performance, all of it's a sacrifice if I'm not using them. Uh, maybe the other product I would recommend that everybody takes in the field is our Super Down products. Not only are they incredibly light and packable and warm, but they truly can save your life. If you have to spend the night out, jump in the jacket and the pant, and it'll get you through some really cold temperatures. Um, so those two, those two products are must-haves for me, but really the whole product line that we make is, is such an advantage over everything else out in the market that I gotta have all of it. Maybe that's just self-serving because <laughs> I made it, but uh, all of it's important. Awesome. Uh, Brian Smithson asked, can't wait to hear about the Peloton 97. So I thought it'd be a good time maybe talk about it a little bit sure. about the application. And how you well, it. the Peloton 97 is a really cool development. Um, you know, we're getting to work directly with Tori and now we're Tori's largest global customer. I'm working directly and Sean and Haley from the de development department are able to work directly with the development team and really focus on new innovations, which is our mantra, which is to reduce weight without giving up performance and f kind of filling in our product mix on, on, with fabrics and technologies that can give us a wider range of uses for our products. And the Peloton 97 is the lightest jersey face fleece ever created. It's only able to, to become a, a jersey face fleece that's under 100 grams because of their prime flex yarn because of the quality of the yarn that comes out of Japan and the quality standards are so high that we can get a fleece fabric that light and still have the durability and performance we need out of it. What I love about the 97 is the, the range of temperatures that can be in that product. It wears cool and heat. Um, I mean, you don't have to take it off. Like the 200 is incredibly warm, but if the temperatures rise at all or I've got a hike in it, it's usually too warm for me, so I gotta pop it off. The 97 kind of fits in a range that you know you can wear it um, and still climb it because it breathes so well. And even in cooler temperatures, it's surprisingly warm for only being 97 grams. The shirt itself weighs only five ounces and is just a great versatile kind of lightweight mid-layer piece that is fantastic for these summer hunts and really is a piece that I'll layer into even the, the colder weather hunts in the winter as well. So what else we have? Benji Bates asked, what's that silver bag on the floor? Oh, you can see it. <laughs> oh, this is super cool. So this is a project I've been working on for a while. And one of the challenges when you travel on these expedition hunts is the amount of gear we have to take up north, especially if you're bringing your own food kits like I do. We're carrying a ton of weight in our bags. And then with the airline restrictions on weight that they've become really you know, difficult with lately um, over the last few years, uh, and how much they charge you. I wanted to build a travel gear system that really solved the problems we have when we go up north. And that's a, a luggage system that can carry a lot of weight and it has a modular design to it, not modular build to it, meaning that you know, we build a, a base bag that can carry majority of your equipment and can keep your equipment loads in this bag to 50 pounds, including the luggage. So you don't go overweight. We can stack a, a gun case on top of it and then another one of our Teku bags over the top of the gun case that you can, they can handle the weight of a gun and all that equipment for a trip and roll through the airport. Um, and when you go to check in, you're able to pull the modular system apart. This bag's 50 pounds and the others are less. Um, it can handle the rigors of, of what we do uh, on these expedition hunts. And it's built off of an aluminum frame trolley system. This is a, a very first prototype that I'm gonna be testing on this trip. And the other, <clears throat> the other issue we have is if I travel with hard luggage or um, a luggage with a built-in frame is when we get to bush planes or smaller planes to fly into base camp, a lot of times the big heavy luggage or the, the frame luggage is, is hard to fit in these planes. 
And so I wanted to build this as a modular bag system. So we travel to the big airports um, with the frame. And then it's also removable off the frame, these quick releases. So you can pull the bag off and, and then uh, leave the frame behind and then throw, throw the bag, which is, is fairly soft, into the, into the smaller bush planes and not have the, the challenge you have with a, with a heavy um, or a frame type of suitcase with a built-in. And this is the first size of this bag. We'll have other bags that go on the frame and dolly system. And what's amazing to me is how wide it is because it's aluminum. The bag is made out of a heavy-duty um, PU-coated fabric, similar to Teku, but heavier. Um, it's an 840 denier or 860 denier double ripstop fabric, heavily coated. It's not waterproof, but it's heavily water resistant. It has a storage pocket up on top. And within the lid, we have some storage as well. Um, like I said, this is a prototype, yeah, but it's a, it's a really good prototype. And my, one of my favorite things about it, it's got camo on the inside. So we'll test this out, make some changes in development, and hopefully we'll have this luggage system out sometime next year. But I love developing these, these types of products that solve the problems specific to what we face up north at you know, other aspects of our gear kit, luggage, um, and apparel that aren't getting solved by other companies. Awesome. So I think we have time for one more. Okay. Um, there were a couple questions that came in recently about food kits. Yep. Maybe they're just tuning in. Uh, okay. Mind breaking that down? Yeah. So kind of what I estimate out is about two pounds of food a day. When I'm looking at my, uh, the mix of food that I'm going to bring, I'm doing dehydrated dinners from Mountain House and breakfast. And I've got 23 ounces to put towards the food that's going with me during the day. And so I'm looking at foods uh, in a calorie range on average that are between 120 calories per ounce to 130 calories per ounce. If you look at what's out there as far as the most calories per ounce, almonds are the highest, nuts are very high in that 180, um, 170, 180 calories per ounce range. Uh, some of the other products, the bars, are going to be in the 120 to 130. So I really look at calories per ounce, break it down in the spreadsheet, and try to hit an average in that 120, 132 pounds a food a day, if you, if you hit that range, is going to be between 36 and 4,000 calories a day, depending on, on the calories per ounce average you get within your food mix. And I like uh, a lot of just regular foods, nuts, bagels, cheeses, uh, not just bringing a bunch of power bars or cliff bars to get me through a day. You can work on shorter hunts. When you're going on 14 day hunts, you need real food, you need regular food, you need high fat content foods, not just high sugars and high carbohydrates. It'll turn your stomach and I get a, a stomach that just doesn't feel good and I don't feel good and it's hard to perform in the mountains when you're not feeling great. Anything else? One more maybe? Yeah, we can do one more. Um, I love the questions. They're good ones. They are. Uh, Elk Bugle 307 says, what differences does Kuyu have compared to other companies? So our, it's a good question. We get that a lot. I was uh, working the mobile showroom up in Boise and that question came in a lot. You know, what makes you guys different? Um, really, you got to look at the business itself that's significantly different than everybody else and how I built this business. Having built Kuyu selling into the, or Sitka selling into the retail models, the restrictions that created for me as far as products and design and the fabrics and materials I can make. The business model, first and foremost, is our, is our biggest competitive advantage versus others out there in the market. What that business model, why I created it, was to work with the, fa uh, the fabrics and materials. Um, that I couldn't work with in the traditional model. And that is companies like Tori, which, you know, their fabrics out of Japan are significantly better as far as performance, quality, and weight because of their patents on their yarn. We can stretch and recover without elastic, which is significant. And um, allows us to develop carbon molded carbon fiber pack frames, which waste reduces weight in packs. And overall, as I talk to people, our materials are the biggest difference um, between us and the competitors. And then, you know, being a lifelong mountain hunter, you know, living, spending time in sheep country every single year, doing a lot of hunting myself and being, um, you know, involved with every single product that we make, gives me a really good advantage when, when we put these product lines together. You know, the small little nuances that make a, a great product, whether it's fit, whether it's fabrics, whether it's material or design. And we live it and breathe it. We're always uh, tweaking our products. We're always looking for how to make them better. And that's all done because of time that I get to spend and the design team gets to spend in the mountains and trying to always work towards perfection, always trying to work towards reducing weight and increasing performance. And you can't do that. You can't make these products and sell it to a retailer. They're just too expensive. If you take our product line and you look at the pricing, if you double it, 
that's what it would cost to buy it at a, at a retailer if we went to retail. Your, our customers get to buy it at wholesale, so they get a great product and a great value that performs better than everybody else's. What else? Awesome. It might be a great closer. I think so. <laughs> so I think finish on that one. All of you that tuned in, thank you. It's always flattering the type of response we get from our customer base. Our customers have allowed this brand to grow well beyond anything I ever imagined, become the global leader in what we do. And I just can't thank you guys enough. I'm humbled, I'm honored, and I hope what I share with you today is helpful for you. Again, if you have questions, you need more help, have specific needs for a particular hunt, you want a gear list put together, we'll do that for you. Just give us the chance. So um, I look forward to sharing the pictures, sharing the story of, of the hunt coming up. And you know, I live for this, I can't wait.